XML form data to PHP. Yeah. In this part, <coughs> I want to talk about the basic techniques we need for project to question four. Yeah. Our first PHP question. We have two PHP questions. The first one, we need to use two techniques. Yeah. So in this part, I will explain those two techniques. Yeah. In this part, uh, I do not give you example directly, but in my next video, I want to use a simple example to show, you know, these two techniques. Yeah. So very simple, very straightforward, but I still, I like to give you a simple example. If you understand this video and run the example I will give you in the next video, then it should be pretty easy to solve that question four in project two. Yeah. All right, so let us start. Yeah. First, I want to talk about H, uh, PHP form handling. Form, yeah. So this form refers to HTML form. So in a HTML document, we can organize our data, yeah, actually the user's input data in a special form. Okay, yeah, form. It is just a form element. So there is a form element in HTML. Okay, form tag. Okay, yeah, form element. Yeah, then you put your input fields, elements inside this pair of tags. Yeah, pretty straightforward. So let's look at the detail of HTML form and connecting to back and PHP data processing file. HTML form, a commonly used way to submit data to the server. We have different ways to submit data, right? Through URL, hyperlink, through URL with parameters, so that's one way. So in JavaScript, JavaScript we can submit data. And last time, last video, I show you how to use AJAX, jQuery AJAX to submit data to PHP processing file. So so many different ways. And this way is very basic. So we need to learn this way also. Yeah. Use HTTP request parameters to store data. Yeah. Here, I remember in one of the videos, I explained the HTTP request parameters. So I don't know if you still remember that part. Yeah. Here, let me just, uh, you know, uh, briefly describe the way we use to send HTTP parameters through HTTP request. Yeah. All right. So basically, yeah, we use HTTP protocol, right? HTTP protocol, there are two parts, request and the response part. Here, let's just look at the request part. Yeah. Because when we send the data, we use the HTTP request part. Yeah. All right. HTTP request, based on the rules in the protocol, the structure of HTTP request is like this, three components. The first one is the first line. First line we call the request line, okay, yeah. Only one line, okay. Then the second part, there is a block, okay, many lines. So. That's the request the header part. Header part. Yeah. After that, there is a blank line as separator. Blank line. 
because otherwise we do not know how to, uh, which part is for second component, which part is for third component. So after that blank line, then we start optional. Yeah, because this part, sometimes you do not have it. So optional. Optional request body. So that's the structure. Optional request a body. All right. Okay. Now, regarding sending data, request the parameters. How do we send parameters? There are two places you can send parameters. The first place in the request line. Okay. In the request line, there is a URL part. In the URL part, you can use, so remember, question mark, parameter name one equals parameter value one, ampersand, pn2 equals pv2, ampersand if you have more parameters. You send in that way. Okay? Yeah, so that's the URL part. Yeah. But only in the request line. Okay? URL part. Yeah. Request line, there are three pieces of information. Yeah. We only we only we are interested in the URL part because that part we can send data. So other part by you know the version number, the protocol name, version, status, you know, that kind of information. Uh, most of the time, we're not interested in the other two pieces. Yeah. All right. Then another place we can send parameters is this request the body. Yeah. Request the body when we use the post method. Then we send the data in this body. Okay. The get method. Yeah. The get method. When we use the get method, then we send the data using the URL part. And the post method, the way you send the same as the format as that. So you still, you have PN1, for example, equals PV1 ampersand, PN2 equals PV2, and so on. Okay? Yeah. But the difference is there is no limit for the request body. You can send, you know, large block of data no limit but for the request line there is a you know very strict limit you cannot set number of characters past certain limit number okay so that limit number most of the time it's 4k 4k number of characters okay all right yeah so that's the basic things you need when you send the data. Okay. All right. I uh, hope you, you know, with this background, you can understand, uh, you know, the basic ways we use to send the data better. Okay. Now let's look at the, this topic, HTML form. Okay. All right. Put the data inside the form element. So we have form element, then inside that element, you can put many input elements. Yeah, input, different input elements. Now in HTML, input fields, text area, right? Radio buttons, check boxes, drop down list many different input elements you can use. Yeah. Specify the back-end processing file and the HTTP method using the attributes of the form tag. Yes. Here, let me use a simple example to show you yeah, how to do that. In the form element, you can use the action attribute, action, to specify that back-end processing file. Here we use PHP in our server-side programming, so we use the PHP file. Okay? But in different programming language, you can specify different processing file here. 
Okay? Yeah. Then, the method, HTTP method. Yeah. For the form, usually, here I say usually, we use the post method. Okay? But if you use the get method, it still works. It still works. Yeah. But you just know you send data through the URL part. Okay? So in the web browser URL bar, you put your mouse cursor on it, click it, you can see the parameter name value pairs encoded in that URL part. Yeah. All right. So we call the query string. So that part, we have a name for it. We call the query string. Okay, yeah. So we do some query, yeah. Query string, yeah. All right. <clears throat> then here we have two input fields. In these two input fields, you can see we use the name attribute. Name refers to the parameter name. So when you send, your parameter name is the first one called a name. The second one called email. Okay. So then when you send the data in the request body, so you will see name, yeah, because it's that name, equals the user will enter name, right? Yeah. For example, you know, Jack, for example. Okay. Yeah. Ampersand email. Okay. Equals a, B, C, at uh, something X, Y, Z, dot com, for example. Okay? Yeah. So in the request body, why request body? Because you use the post method. So the parameter name value pairs will be encoded in the request body sent to the server. Okay? All right. So that that is the you know something you cannot see it happens behind the scene yeah but here i describe that so you can understand the you know whole story better yeah. next retrieve parameter values yeah. we did last time yeah i talk about that last time so here we do it another time okay yeah remember user's input, we should use the filter underscore input function to try to make our data more secure. Yeah. Because the user can embed some harmful code to attack our database. Yeah. So here, we use this way to retrieve the data. Yeah. All right. Similarly, for the email, we also do this way yeah. after that we can use the parameter values to do our data processing so that's straightforward okay all right yeah. next I want to talk about the basic properties of HTML4 yeah. here I just give you three simple properties the first one the form element cannot be nested inside another form element you only you can use one form element to set send a set of parameters, a set of parameters, but not nested. Another form element inside one form element, you know, that won't work. Okay, so that's one property. Another one is an HTML page can have multiple HTML forms, not just one, multiple. It's okay. Okay, yeah. Because you think about you have several blocks of data components. Think about that. So each component you can set, send a set of parameters. So another block component, another component you can set another set of parameters. Things like that. Okay? Yeah. So multiple four HTML forms in one page. So no problem, completely legal, yeah, because those elements are 
nested, parallel, uh, not nested. <laughs> yeah, remember, the first rule tells us you cannot do nested way, yeah. but you can do parallel way, right? So here I said the multiple, this, we do the parallel way. Okay? Yeah. So many in parallel, yeah. All right. Then for this case, only data inside the current form, yeah. because every time you can only submit one of the forms. So if your HTML page has multiple forms, every time you can only submit one of the forms. Okay? Yeah. Only data included in this form can be sent to the server. Data stored, entered in other forms, lost. You cannot send. Yeah. Only one of the forms you can send data. Okay? So those are the basic properties. Yeah. All right. Next, I want to talk about another important technique, PHP sessions. So this is a very useful concept. So it's pretty simple, yeah, but in some special situations, so we need to use this technique. Yeah. All right. A session is a way to store information in variables, the values for certain number of variables to be used across multiple pages. See? Across multiple pages. Sometimes we need that. Sometimes multiple pages we need to share same set of data pieces. Especially, for example, for, you know, uh, e-commerce website. You know, shopping cart. Yeah. After many different pages, we still we want to maintain the shopping cart information, right? So we need session yeah. here. Yeah. But here I want to point out this uh, store information, and we can use that information across multiple pages. It sounds familiar to us, right? Because we saw similar things before. Yeah. At that time, remember one of the homework questions I ask you, I also I give you some examples in notes in my lectures. S client side, you know, local storage, remember, buffer, local buffer, store the data client side. In the browser, in your browser, there is some special buffer you can store data that can be shared by multiple pages. But that technique is the client side technique. Client side technique. Okay? Yeah, client side. Oh, sorry. Yeah. And this session thing, it is the server side technique. server side technique so quite different yeah sometimes you you can use client side sometimes you can use the server side okay yeah yeah so here so let's learn the server side yeah. start a php session in order to use php sessions you have to start a php session explicitly explicitly that means by default no PHP session is created for you. By default, you cannot use PHP session. Yeah. The reason I will explain soon. Yeah. A session is started with, how to start a session? Here, with this function. The function called session underscore start. Before you can use the session in PHP, you have to call this function, okay? Otherwise, your PHP page won't participate in PHP sessions. Yeah. So you have to explicitly tell the PHP engine, I want to make this page participate in PHP session management technology, things like that, okay? Yeah. All right. 
Session variables. Yeah, so when you use PHP session, you can store multiple session variables. One by one, multiple var variables, their values, yeah, are set with the PHP super global variable dollar underscore capital session. So you understand the super global concept, right? Super global variable, that concept. Here we learn another useful super global variable, dollar underscore capital session. That's super global. Yeah. But how do we store session variables using the super global? Through an associative array. You know the associative array concept, right? We use array keys, the string keys. Through those string keys, we can find, we can search for the values. Yeah. So that's the associative array. Yeah. All right. Session variables hold information about one single user. Here, yeah. you can see all those session variables created for one session, uh, one PHP file. So this one, where a user calls this PHP file, that session object can only be used by this particular user. In other words, no two different users, they can share the same set of data in sessions. No, the reason is very simple. We want to protect our customer's data, right? So we don't want, you know, some customer data to be shared by you know different users so that is very dangerous yeah yeah all right so you can see now uh, this property uh, very important yeah all right now example to use session variables write data into those session variables retrieve data into those session variables yeah. first I show you how to write data into those session variables. Yeah. So look at this example. At the beginning, you have to call this function first, session underscore start. Let me explain the reason. The reason is very simple. Yeah. Because if you use PHP sessions, you need to use a lot of memory resource in the server side in the main memory a block of memory space must be allocated to your session object to manage the data stored in those session variables so that part not cheap it takes quite some memory resource so that's the reason by default the PHP does not allow you to use session object automatically. You have to request it. When you request it, and you then you will get that resource to be used. Resource. Yeah. But when you use a lot of sessions, your program will be slower a little bit because you use more resource. The more resource you use, the program will be slower. Yeah. So that's why by default, if you do not use, don't use it because it will make your programs slower. Yeah. But sometimes, because some features are very important, we, we are willing to pay a little more, pay here, you know, we need to use more resource to, you know, to allow us to use those special features. Yeah. So that's the reason behind this step. We need to request it. Okay. Yeah. After that, then write data into the session. Pretty straightforward. Super global. Then associative array, the key, the first session variable, 
you use one key, the value. Second session variable, another key, another value. But here, there is one thing I like to let you know. The value here, we can use a array variable. Yeah. So we can create a PHP array. Okay. Yeah. Like some one array. Yeah. So we store, you know, values in many elements. We can assign that array variable to that session session variable. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, then after we retrieve the, the array value. Then we can use it just like array. Yeah. Yeah. So here, the same way as a single variable. Array variable is used the same way as we use the single variable. Yeah. Here I do not have example to use array yeah, in a session variable. Yeah. But you can easily get the idea how to use an array in a session variable. Yeah. All right, so the next example, we retrieve data from a session variable, then we can use it. Yeah. Pretty straightforward. Yeah. All right, get PHP session variable values. In this example, first, we still don't forget to call this session underscore star function you know man your page participates in php session management technology okay then after that now you can retrieve values for your session variables so you can use the values for your data processing yeah pretty straightforward so if the value is one array, you just access array elements. You know, nothing special. The same way as you used in the regular array. Okay. All right. So that's pretty much the two technologies, basic technologies, very useful in PHP programming. And I designed that our project to question four. Yeah, so this one, project two, question four, we will practice, you know, two te techniques Describe it in this video. Yeah. In my next video, I plan to create a simple example. So that example we, we practiced several times the Duke example, right? The Duke example, remember I already, uh, you know, used that Duke example twice before. This time I plan to use this Duke example the third time. Yeah. Third time as a sample example for this question. Yeah, for this question. So then you modify, you know, based on our requirements, you can easily modify to get the solution of this question. Pretty straightforward. Okay. All right. So let me stop this video here.